Will you say hi to my sister Mary Brennan who's getting married on Saturday? Tony, 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 not a problem. Ed, you're the last one on today. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you, Rick, and yourself. I'll get a black coffee. Come back. We know where to live, so we said, well, I got the job and trim. Let's so, shorten the commute. Well, exactly, by, by walking. But I was a coffee head then. I loved coffee. There was nowhere decent than trim. There was there a is place. Now. There was a place down the top right-hand side of the main street that we used to go to for sandwiches at lunch. A load of us. I don't I know if it. coffee was any good. I used to get sausage rolls in there. Lost me. Yeah. Greatest sausage because when I could eat sausage rolls before my cholesterol went through the roof. Used to great potato salad. As well. Did they? Yeah. I don't eat potato in salad. It looks like vomit. I can't eat potato salad. No, I was like wrong. For it. Potato salad is wrong. I was only in trim recently. Why? Uh, I was dropping my wife down there. She was working down there uh, for the afternoon. My wife's a, a solicitor, so she was down the court. She was working down there for the day. Yeah. And I decided I'd go for the spin just to have a look. Yeah. And That's almost nothing has no. changed in since I was there what in 1994. What I used to love trim was market day. Yeah. You'd be on air in this big international radio station. Yeah. And if you open the window, ah, out the bag, that was fantastic. You could look out. There was a hotel on one side mm. and the mart was on the other, so you could look out and see sheep being sold out yeah. of the window fantastic. of this national British radio station. I that was brilliant. I love the surreal nature of that. It kind of freaked out a few of the English lads, didn't it? Yeah, they were used to it. You do imagine, like, if you like you getting a job in BBC Radio 1 or something, you go, oh man, this is going to be great, and it's in the middle of some parking lot or something. Like well, they're ending up on the Isle of Sky. Yeah, you know. something, yeah, something yeah. ridiculous like that. But Trim, of course, is famous for one thing. Yeah, I was only seeing a thing about that the, the other day online about uh, Trim being one of those places you should bring your kids to in the world. CNN had done 10 places in the world bring your kids that will enrich them in the, the, the okay. Galapagos Islands, <laughs> uh, the Grand Canyon, um, London, a lot of them was, and Trim Castle because they shot Brave Braveheart. Was shot there. While I was there. You were there, so you missed that. I missed the whole Braveheart shenanigans. I know if you go into Trim now and you go into some of the chip shops, they'll have pictures yeah. of the Braveheart set. When Mel came in looking for chips. Mel getting his cod and you know, fresh fish and whatever yeah. to go, yeah. So you were there, were you, you went, were you, do, do we look out for you in the... In the in no, the do movie? you know, a lot of the lads who worked there yeah. were in it. I was almost an extra in Braveheart, apart from my inherent laziness. Uh, they were putting a call out for locals to go in and don all the gear into the blue face paint and the, oh, I'm going to work for a day. And a couple of the guys who were working there at the time, Dickie Bow and Cousin Brucey, a couple of lads all went in and they're in the background doing the oh thing. <laughs> I was too lazy. I could have been a brave heart and I just wasn't arsed. You were too lazy? Yeah. Oh, you were... Yeah, I just couldn't be arsed. I wasn't in it. I, I didn't go down that day. Did they ask? Like, did they go into the radio station and say, No, they, were, no they just put out a call for, for people who lived in the town and for locals. And oh, you want to okay. an open extra castle. So are you, were, you were lying in or something? I just... Yeah. It's, it's my natural position. You, you could have been in a Hollywood movie. Yeah. They could have gone, that guy. I'm not much for, for that whole international you, fame. You know, you know what would have done it for you? Your look of intense greed would have got you to the front of the line. My, you would have said he wants, he wants it more than My ever. look of intense greed would have been lost in the looks of 10,000 other people all racing over Shout it. Shouting William Wallace. Yeah. 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 Not for me. Well, that's all right, though. But you do the radio. That's, that's kind of a lazy man's gig, isn't it? Isn't it? It is in its backside. Come on. You You're kid. doing this to lure me you out. Kid. You <laughs> so are. I met my wife through friends. Oh. However long ago. I'm trying to think back now and give myself numbers. Well, you're 40 now, Rick. Because I'm well, well made. I'm 40 now, but she's also, um, we only got married a year ago because yeah, she's my, she's my, I'm divorced. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm married again. So we met four years ago, 2000, and, no, five years ago now, 2008, summer of 2008. Good golly, man. Through other people, through friends. That's all right, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's working out okay so far. Yeah. yeah. You get on still? Five years? They said it wouldn't last. It's well, we've known each other for five years. We've been married for we've been married for one in June. And you know, we'll see how that pans out. Yeah. It's the greatest thing ever. I'm not gonna get smushy on this. I'm not. Don't make me get smushy. I'm trying to get a tear out of you. I was in love with this. That's not gonna happen. No, it's not gonna happen. she's a solicitor? She is. Wow. That's a proper job. That's a grown up job. It's a real grown up that's job. That's a grown you married a grown up. That she's very good at. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. But that's what they say most people in radio I have to have a spouse that does something. So, you know, if it, it all goes kaput, in reality. if it all goes kaput as well, you know, yeah. at least there's an income. Yeah, my mother's still asking me, you know, when am I going to get a property? Oh, yeah, you can't rely on us. Yeah. No, that's the thing, isn't it? It's not going to work out. I've always I was always told that, if you're going to get married, marry someone who has a job. But my belief of, of, of our job and what it is we do for a living is, I'm I, I'm going to be fired tomorrow. Oh, of I, I treat every day as if it's the last day I'm going to do the But do you still like it? I mean, do you enjoy it every day? Yeah. Do you? No, I enjoy it now. Right. There were times in my life when I was doing this, and I've been doing this for 
20 years at the stage yeah. as an actual paying the bills job. Yeah. There were lots of times where I didn't enjoy it and I just was going in and phoning it in. Yeah, absolutely. But no, now at the moment and for the last number of years, it's great. Because I like the people I work with. I like the job I do. I like the fact that I've, you know, a huge amount of freedom. I can go in every day and talk about whatever fancies me on the day. Can you? Yeah. That's cool. Pretty much, yeah. We've no constraints because nobody has any expectations on us. It's great. We're, we're tucked over there. We're not a hard news show. We don't do all that. So there's no agenda. Yeah, yeah. And we don't have, you know, expectations. So it's it's we're that little filler thing between there. And so there. I have the same job in the studio, studio now. now. It sounds like you've got to figure it figured out. Would that At be right? the moment? Yeah. I don't think I've. I know this, this is a strange thing to say for somebody who does what we do, but I don't think I've ever been in a happier place. Oh, look at it this way. Ever. You've married the woman of your dreams. Absolutely. She's a responsible human being. She is. You've got a really good job in a good organisation. Yeah. You've got your health. Yeah. You've got your kids. Yeah. You're a bastard. It's I all to. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, do you know what? And there's that thing about, particularly when you do what we do for a living, and it's quite public, you're afraid yeah. to say things like, God, I'm really happy, everything's oh, brilliant. My jinx it. Because you know, because you don't want other people to look at you and go, that's oh, I was whining about that. Oh, well, that's the Irish thing, yeah. isn't it? Nah, that's the Irish thing. No, it's, it's ah, just... It is. No, I know, I know from... It, you know North American attitudes. Yeah. I love their attitudes as in the positive attitude. Yeah. Not even the think positive. I'm not, yeah. Don't necessarily buy all that. But the whole good for you. I love that. You know, I've just got the job of my dreams. Here it's sort of, sort of. It, it depends on who you're. There's that you're, quote, I die a little more every time my friend succeeds. That's kind of an Irishism, you know. There is a little of that. And you're also really conscious that because there are a lot of people around you who aren't doing, or not doing so well, but aren't as happy as you are. You kind of yes. just put a little blanket over your own happiness and you go, you know, I'm happy you with my life do. and my relationship and everything's okay, but I'm just going to keep quiet about that. I remember saying. watching the Late Late Show years ago. Colin Meany was on. Was it Colin Meany in Star Trek? In Star Trek, yes. Uh, in Next Generation. So he was based in Los Angeles. No, he was in Deep Space Nine. Whatever one was. I don't know. This is important. I don't know. No, this is crucial. Nerd. I don't know. So he's in Los Angeles, right? And he was in the Late Late Show studio and he was yeah. talking and he just dropped it in. It was Gay Byrne interview and he said, uh, bloody bloody bloody. He says, yeah, no, I, had to, I flew over in Concord yesterday and, got it. <laughs> and then he stopped. <laughs> You know, it's got, yeah. and he had to justify it. He said, Irish guilt. The only reason I had to fly Concord was because I needed to be in London. I blah, 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 blah. You couldn't just let it go. It's exactly the same attitude that whenever you look at anybody and say, God, that, that's really nice, that, that dress you're wearing, whatever, I got it in pennies. Oh, got it in pennies. It's the same, exactly the same instinct within all of us. And it's a healthy instinct. What, talking ourselves down? Yeah. Do you think so? I have to do that. I wouldn't be able to be one of those people who would be brash, no, there's showy a... and stuff. I can't. Yeah, there's the fine line between talking yourself down and, and being a blowhard. There's the, there's the middle ground. You don't want to be going, like your outfit. Yeah, I know, it's cost me 10 grand and you can't afford it. I'm from a really working class background. My mum actually grew up in a tenement. Mm. Actually grew up in a real, actual tenement before they knocked them down on Clambrassel Street. Yeah. She was An one of the actual Her tenement. family was one of the last families that were pulled out of the tenements on Clambrassel Street in the early 60s before they moved it for the widening of the road as you go down towards uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Okay. So they were moved out to Drimnet, flats in Drimnet, yeah. and that's where I was born. And I grew up in Crumlin. Yeah. And when you do all that, my dad was out of work for most of the 80s. Yeah. So when you know that's the context of your life and your history and where you come from, you do feel very. It gives you a real grounding. You don't get. If I went to a private school in Black Rock and if my mummy and daddy had you know a big pile on the hill. So is it almost like survivor things. guilt, as in you now have achieved more than your parents did monetarily? Yeah. You see, I don't. Uh, I don't think that's survivor guilt at all because your, your parents always, every set of parents always wants their kids to do better than they have done themselves. Agreed. Everybody does. Agreed. That. So. You know, when your kids do end up doing better. I'm like, oh. Not the accountant. You'd never be a accountant. I always want to be a writer, I just can't write. Have you tried writing? Yeah. What have you written? I've, I've written poetry since I was a kid, since I was 16, but none of it's ever gone anywhere other than towards, you know, close ones and loved ones. And and what do they say about it? They quite well, like did it. Did they give you the smile? This is the thing. They like it, and they did they there. give you the nod? Mm, it's good. No, I, I get the, I get the, I get the real, genuinely. That's brilliant. That's adoration. But they're oh, close yeah. to you, and they're, yeah. they're your, usually your loved ones, and you. So you can't judge that. And I'm one of those guys who would be too concerned to put it out to reality and have everybody go nonsense. 
So I'm perfectly happy to keep it all. Imagine you took that. Imagine someone else took the risk for you and sent out your stuff. And the right. response was mind blowing. The world went, oh my god, world stop. That's better than winning the lottery. But what great. would you think of that? Would you would you then think to yourself, hang on, you'd have to reevaluate who you are then, wouldn't you? Maybe. And you know what? I've had a situation over the last maybe year or so where I've had people I know, a couple of people I know or have worked with who've gotten book deals who aren't writers in and of themselves, but yeah. they work in, in our part of the world. They've gotten book deals and their books have gone out there. And you go, why wouldn't I just, you know, have a crack at that? And I have a couple of people who've said to me, if you ever write anything, come back to me and I'll have a look at it and we'll see if there's anything. And it's just about getting myself You see, there are writers together. who would kill for that conversation. For yeah. a, a, a publisher to say, ah, give us a look at your work so we'll I have know. a look at it. But it's that inherent lack of self-belief one has in oneself yeah. that you're, you're shite. Well, right. That was on the radio when I was 22 or 23. Well, well I remember you doing the funny farm on FM 104. That, that was a scary scary shouty scream. But you had to do it to get to where you were. You yeah. had to do that to become who yeah. you were, like you develop anyway. And I can't listen to that anymore. Oh, I, it's I hear terrifying. You. And I'm yeah. sure you feel the same way about when you were a younger whelp. Yeah. If you hear back some of your own stuff, you go, Well, I still do. Maybe yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. But I'm nearly done, and I gotta be starting to make me move soon. Uh, I have, yeah. Well, you've got, a, you've got, a, you've got Sadly, a job to do today. I've got today. real work to go to. Yeah. Got a job to do this is far more entertaining. Do you want to take some of that with you? Ask for a dog. I'll wrap them up. Yeah. Yeah, wrap them. I bring them. Bring them for lunch. I bring me to the lads. We'll wrap up. Sure. Okay. Yeah. What time have you got to be out there? Twelve. Ah, whenever you release me from my from. Well, my, let's go. I, I didn't say it was no hurry. It's very pleasant. It's a nice spot here. It is a nice. Well, like we'll it. do this again. I've never been here before. We do it no, again. I know. We'll do this again. I'll go up and pay. Okay. Cool. Shit, that's what he says. No, I'll pay No, you were the first person to say it. <laughs> <laughs> cool.